Prisoner escape Morgan Bridge lock up. As Prime Minister Andrew Honest toured the Green Shield Division in Westmoreland on Friday night, lawmen at the Morgan Bridge police station were busy chasing a prisoner who escaped from their holding cell. According to a source, the escapee got away while the police was releasing another man on bail. The police could be seen attempting to catch the escapee as they chased him through the community. However, their efforts did not yield any success. The SKP is still at large. It is unclear what offence or offences the man was in custody for. Holness and his team have been to the park since Friday morning after meeting with supporters in Seaton Crescent, Russia and Dista in West Savannah Lamar. He made a stop in George's Plain and later Green Hill. The incident did not cause a disruption to the tour. Chaka Berry facing multiple gun charges. A 49-year-old man is now in police custody following a May 2023 incident on Maxville Avenue that left one man nursing gunshot wounds. According to the Halfway Tree Police, Maurice Daly, otherwise called Chaka Berry, laborer of Maravilla Road, Kingston 5, has been charged with wounding with intent, possession of prohibited weapon, unauthorized possession of prohibited ammunition, and using a prohibited weapon to commit a felony. Reports are that about 9.45 p.m., a man was standing on Maxville Avenue awaiting public transportation, when a white Toyota Pro Box motor car with several men aboard drove up. One of the men allegedly opened gunfire in the direction of a man hitting him several times before speeding off in the vehicle. The wounded man was admitted to hospital in serious condition. Daly was apprehended by a team of police during an operation on Wednesday, February 7. He was officially charged after he was interviewed in the presence of his lawyer on Thursday, February 8. His court date is being finalized. Bloody Friday in Clarendon as three people shot two fatally. Two people are dead following a shooting in Throat Hall near Frankfield in Clarendon. A third person is said to be hospitalized following a Bloody Friday afternoon in the area. Details in regards to the motive for the killings are sketchy at this time. Police are investigating. Popcorn fine for a night night's breach. Dancehall artist Popcorn was ordered to pay $40,000 or serve 30 days in jail for breaching the Nice Abatement Act when he appeared in the St. Thomas Parish Court on Friday. The artist, whose given name is Andrew Sutherland, was charged in relation to the December 23, 2023 staging of Unruly Fest in St. Thomas. Last month, he was fined after he pleaded guilty to using indecent language, disorderly conduct, using abusive and close language, and issuing a threat to police officers. The entertainer was charged and placed before the court for his full motive to read towards the police during unruly fest. However, he was ordered to return to court in relation to the Noise Abatement Act charge. Shelley and Fraser Price to retire after Paris Olympics Jamaican sprint legend Shelley and Fraser Price, a three-time Olympic gold medalist and ten-time world champion, said she will retire after this year's Paris Olympics in an interview published Thursday. Speaking to the American magazine Essence, Fraser Price said she is forcing herself to retire at age 37 to spend more time with her family. My son needs me, Fraser Price told the magazine. My husband and I have been together since before I won in 2008. He has sacrificed for me. We're a partnership, a team. It's because of that support that I am able to do the things that I have been doing all these years, and I think I now owe it to them to do something else. She is focusing on her training for one last chance at Olympic glory in France. What Fraser Price said is about pushing boundaries as well as showing people that you stop when you decide. I want to finish on my own terms. Fraser Price has won eight Olympic medals, including 100 meter gold at 2018 in Beijing and 2012 in London, and a Tokyo Olympic cycle as part of Jamaica's 4x100 relay. Her medal halt also includes silver at 100 meter in Tokyo and 200 meter in London, plus a 2016 Rio 100 meter bronze. She won 100 meter world titles in 2009, 2013, 2015, 2019, and 2022, plus a 200 meter record in 2013, and 4 by 100 relay goals in 2009, 2013, 2015, and 2019. There's not a day I'm getting up to go and practice, and I'm like, I'm over this, Fraser Price stated. Local government debates to cost 24 million. 
it will cost approximately 24 million to undertake the debates for the local government election. The Jamaica Debates Commission, JDC, will be hosting two debates, the first on Thursday, February 15, and the second on Saturday, February 17, starting at 9 o'clock each evening. Speaking at a press briefing on February 9, JDC Commissioner Bryan explained that the cost covers a debate what session, among other things. The debate participants will be fielded questions posed by journalists. Meantime, the debate will allow Jamaicans to hear from the main political parties about their plans for local government election. The debate operation covers a number of things. There is the debate itself, so it's every element of production, pre-production, and promotion. And that also includes something that we call Get Out the Vote, where what we are doing is some amount of work to educate the public about the importance of local government and what local government does and what it's responsible for. Another thing that the budget covers is Debate Watch, where we have these 20 Zoom rooms and we're having communities all across the country where they are watching the debates and they are with a facilitator and at the end of the debates, they then debate the debate, right? And then from there, we get a lot of feedback and information how they felt about the debates, but also the very important function of Debate Watch is to foster very open dialogue in a way that is friendly, where different ideas can contend in a, a much more measured, more informed sort of way as opposed to the usual kind of political rhetoric types of discussion people tend to have. That budget also pays for the research that we're going to do, the post-debate polling, where we poll 1,500 people across the island to get their feedback on, did the debate meet their expectations? Did they hear what they wanted to hear? Did we deal with the subject matter they were interested in? Were their concerns met or addressed? As is normal, for the debates, we will have the benefit of a moderator, and that moderator is the one who acts almost like a traffic cop and controls the flow of the debates. And the moderator is joined by three journalists. We have two journalists who act as questioners and a social media journalist. For debate one, our moderator is Ms. Janelia Precious, and the panelists asking questions will be Ms. Janet Silvera, Mr. Giovanni Dennis, and our social media editor will be Ms. Nicole Lewis. For debate two, our moderator will be Mr. George Davis. Our panelists will be Mr. Arthur Hall, Ms. Natalie Campbell, and again doing social media editor duties will be Ms. Nika Lewis. The People's National Party and the Jamaica Labour Party are expected to finalize their debate team members by next week. Representatives of the JLP, Sean Hay Webner, the representative of the PNP, Colin Campbell, each said the party has a pool of persons from which to select debate team members. Well, the People's National Party will finalize its teams on Monday. I, I can have... give you an idea of the um, person who we will be utilizing for the debate. So... Uh, we have Senator Charles Sinclair, Mayor Richard Curry, and Councilor Venetia Phillips for the first debate. Uh, to be confirmed, reconfirmed, put it that way, because you know there can be a change. And the pool for the second debate is Mayor Senator Delroy Williams, Deputy Mayor Richard Vernon, and one of two uh, female councillors, either Whitney Smith Curry of Brampton Division or Tanya Lee Williams of Maypen North. That's the culture of persons for the debate. Let me say, for us, our pool is a pool that has placed great emphasis on young candidates. So you will see a few of the existing players, but widely speaking, it will be a showcase of the new and special talent that will be available to the local government system. Mandeville Hospital CEO responds to access concerns. Chief Executive Officer at the Mandeville Regional Hospital, Alwyn Miller, has defended the decision to not allow motorists to access the facility through a maintenance gate at Hargreaves Hospital. Miller pointed to security and speeding among the reasons for access being restricted through the gate. It is closed at 7 p.m., which has been the standard for many years. It is a maintenance gate. It is not a gate for the public for a number of reasons. When we have that gate open and people traverse there, we have issues with theft of staff property because the gate takes them directly through the staff accommodation area. You have the issue of criminal activity, Miller told reporters on Monday. He was responding to a submission to the reporters by a member of the public who argued that Hargreaves' entrance 
should be open to emergency situations and hospital staff at all times. Use of this entrance is restricted to hospital staff and is only open and manned by the security personnel between the hours of 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The solution is to have this entrance accessible 24 hours a day for hospital staff as well as members of the public with a health emergency. By doing this in an emergency, there would be two choices for which to determine the quickest route to the hospital, the letter writer argued. The author further argued that the travel time for an on-call doctors was being extended because they cannot access the Hargreaves Hospital gate. In particular, a journey from the home of a critical member of the surgery team that normally takes 5 minutes using the main entrance to the hospital ended up taking 20 minutes because of the new traffic light and one-way system. This extra 15 minutes could have been fatal. Thankfully, the actions of experienced senior staff members and two jury surgeons saved the day while they waited for the arrival of the delayed member of the surgery team and a tragedy was averted, the letter read in part. However, Miller reiterated that the Hargreaves entrance lead to a staff dormitory, renal and ophthalmologist clinic. Patients going there are visually impaired. Many of them are elderly patients. Also, patients going to that unit and when you have people driving like this through the section of the hospital, it poses a threat both to patients and staff, he stated. He added that the hospital staff has only complained to him about the existing of the hospital. When they are leaving work, they want to ease off the driving through that gate because it is shorter to get to their home. It is when we are leaving, not when they are coming to look out for their patients. That is the only complaint that I got as it pertains to medical personnel, added Miller. Concerns were raised about the access to the hospital last December following the implementation of a one-way system on Caledonia Road where the facility's main access is situated. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.